Meet Jessica Meir. I'm Jessica Meir, and I'm a scientist at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. Meir is a biologist and a postdoctoral researcher at the university. But to a brood of 12 goslings, she's also something else. Mom. And they really think that I'm their mother. The seven-month-old bar-headed goslings, so-called for the stripes that adults have on their head, are imprinted on Meir. Imprinting was a process that started as soon as they hatched. I went to the Sylvan Heights Waterfowl Park in North Carolina uh, just in time a few days before the birds were going to hatch. And so I was the first thing that they saw. I actually held them in my hand um, as soon as they came out of the egg. All summer long, it was intensive bonding time between Mir and her chicks. And so we would spend long hours and days in North Carolina in the summer just sitting outside and they were crawling all over me and and, and napping on top of me. And then we would go for walks and come back. And especially in the beginning, I would say, I'm not sure who's imprinted more, them on me or, or me on them. The imprinting is just a tool to familiarize the geese with being held and observed and to make them more easily trainable. The real question behind Mir's research is something else. How did these geese accomplish super bird feats of flight? See, bar-headed geese are among the highest migrating species on the planet and have even been spotted flying above Mount Everest in their annual migration between Southern and Central Asia. To put that into perspective, that's higher than songbirds, geese, eagles, small planes, and some commercial jets. It's cold enough at that altitude that exposed skin can freeze instantly, and there's only a third as much oxygen as there is at sea level. So how do the birds do it? Well, among the bar-headed geese's adaptations are large lungs. They can breathe more deeply than many other birds. And under low oxygen, they breathe more frequently, too. Research has found that they also have red blood cells that grab oxygen especially well and carry that oxygen through capillaries that are especially dense in these birds' muscles. So all of these things have been shown, but all of these things have been shown on resting animals and animals in the lab. So Mir plans to soon put her geese into a wind tunnel to observe their body's responses while they fly in low oxygen conditions like those above the Himalayas. Electrodes will measure the bird's heart rate and temperature, and a custom-fit mask on the bird's beak will measure their respiration. Mir hopes that these experiments reveal further, unique adaptations of bar-headed geese. In the meantime, as she prepares for that research, Mir continues her parental duties. And now, um, as the birds have gotten older, they can all fly, and so we switched over to doing the flight training. Um, that started on a bicycle and now has evolved into using a scooter, and <laughs> it's, it's a really great time. It's a really, an absolutely amazing feeling to be on the scooter and to glance over my shoulder and sometimes right next to me so close that their wingtip is brushing my arm and looking at this animal in the eye and seeing its face that close to you in flight. It's really an amazing experience. There are a lot more questions um, that remain about the bar-headed goose and I can foresee lots of different experiments and they are such exceptional animals that I really think it should continue.